It's a question popular in internet forums, often amongst keyboard warriors with no actual mat experience. Which is the better martial art, karate or Brazilian jiu-jitsu? Despite the countless opinions given online, the real answer is not that easy to ascertain. First though, let's learn a little bit about each martial arts style. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu has its origins, naturally enough, in Brazil. Back in the turn of the 20th century, the founder of Judo, Kano Chigoro, sent five of his best students overseas to demonstrate the art of Judo. Amongst these five was Mitsuyo Maida, a man often considered the first mixed martial artist of the modern era. Maida traveled the world and gave demonstrations at every country he came to, fighting against wrestlers, boxers, savat fighters, and various other martial artists. In 1917, Maida was in Brazil when a young man by the name of Carlos Gracie happened to be in the audience during one of Maida's demonstrations. Eager to be trained in the art of judo, Carlos Gracie asked Maida after the demonstration to take him on as a student, to which Maida agreed. Carlos would go on to train with Maida for several years before Maida moved on and Carlos opened up his own judo school to train others. Carlos's other siblings had learned judo along with him and helped him teach classes to new students. Only one brother was unable to join in their judo practice, his younger brother Helio Gracie, who was far physically weaker than his brothers and thus unable to muster the strength to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with other fighters. Instead, Helio began to modify the techniques that his brothers used, eventually developing a fighting style which was both simpler and sought to avoid the stand-up fighting style of most martial arts. Helio's new combat style would prove revolutionary. With his new style, the much smaller Helio was able to defeat his larger brothers, and soon he was taking on other fighters. By using leverage techniques, Helio was able to take much larger opponents down to the ground, and then use superior groundwork techniques to force his opponents into painful submissions. With a focus on bringing the fight to the ground, Helio had avoided the need for raw physical strength to stand toe-to-toe -to -toe with a powerful striking foe. His technique was so effective, he was soon challenging and winning matches against men as much as 80 pounds larger than him. With a focus on ground techniques, torsions, and submissions, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu is a simple yet extremely effective fighting technique that can see small fighters defeat far larger opponents. Its emphasis on simplicity allows fighters to focus on learning a smaller number of techniques and thus master them, as opposed to the much greater range of techniques of traditional Jiu-Jitsu. The exact origins of karate are shrouded in mystery. Some believe that karate was created by wandering Indian monks who developed the fighting style as a means to defend themselves without weapons. Others believe that it was natively developed by the inhabitants of the Ryukyu Kingdom, an island kingdom that ruled the Japanese Ryukyu Islands from the 15th century to the 19th century. What is known is that the martial art that would become known as karate came to prominence in the Ryukyu Kingdom and adapted from Chinese Kung Fu. In 1879, the Empire of Japan annexed the Ryukyu Kingdom, and Ryukyuans brought the martial art with them to the mainland as they migrated in search of work. The martial art gradually grew in popularity, but became a national sensation after the Japanese Ministry of Education invited Gishin Funukashi, the father of modern karate, to give a demonstration in Tokyo. Two years later, in 1924, karate clubs began to appear in major universities, and by 1932 nearly every large Japanese university had a karate club. The martial art would become an international sensation though thanks to the American occupation of Okinawa Island after the end of the Second World War. American servicemen were exposed to the martial art form and brought much of the knowledge back home with them. A growing interest in the martial art quickly saw Japanese instructors moving to America and beyond, making karate a global martial art form. In the 1960s and 70s, martial arts movies greatly added to karate's popularity, and today it's one of the most widely practiced martial arts. Unlike Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, karate largely focuses on the striking power of the hands and feet, though any body part can be utilized as a striking weapon if need be, to include the head. After coming in contact with other martial arts, karate quickly adapted the use of grappling, throwing, and securing opponents in joint locks, though karate is still best utilized as a stand-up fighting style. So of the two, which is better, karate or Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu? Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu may not have the emphasis on striking that karate does, but that doesn't mean that its practitioners don't know how to throw a punch. Just the opposite, BJJ often utilizes strikes in order to subdue opponents who have been successfully grappled or to try and defend from being grappled. Karate, however, is almost the inverse of BJJ, with a much greater focus on striking power from standing positions, avoiding a ground fight if at all possible. In a fight, a BJJ fighter will try to move the fight to the ground as quickly as possible in order to neutralize the striking power of an enemy fighter. On the ground, a fighter isn't able to generate nearly as much power in a punch or a kick, while in the standing position, trained fighters are able to transfer power from their legs up through their hips to their fist, essentially turning a single punch into a full-body power blow. 
By moving to the ground, not only is the amount of power generated for a punch or a kick dramatically lowered, but vital KO sites on the body are much easier protected. Good guard techniques and smart placement of your opponent can keep dangerous KO sites on the body, such as behind the ear on the head, protected against an enemy's strikes. Standing up, though, even a successfully blocked blow to such a site can still at times transfer enough energy to still be a threat. On the ground, a Brazilian jiu-jitsu fighter will quickly move into a position where they can leverage much of their own body weight against select areas of the opponent's body, especially the limbs in what's known as an arm or a leg lock. In the classic straight angle lock, an opponent's foot is captured and held against the ribs, and then the BJJ fighter can roll and use strength from their chest, back, and arms to apply incredible force to the foot, breaking it if the opponent does not submit. Many BJJ techniques focus on applying extreme force to vulnerable parts of the body and is why Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu allows even much smaller fighters to defeat heavyweight opponents. Karate, on the other hand, focuses on keeping the fight as upright as possible, seeking to end a fight by delivering a brutally powerful blow to an opponent's KO site or by devastating an opponent's limbs. Rather than using torsion to force a submission or physically incapacitate a foe, karate uses techniques such as devastating elbow strikes to deliver incredible power to a very precise point on the opponent's body. An elbow strike to the solar plexus can end a fight, while an elbow strike to the opponent's own extended elbow can severely damage the joint and make the arm useless. A major focus of karate is also the execution of devastating combo attacks meant to catch your opponent completely off guard. One prime example of this is the low kick high kick combo, in which a karate fighter will launch a quick series of low kicks at his opponent's legs and when the opponent drops their guard to protect another expected low kick, the karate fighter then uses the opportunity to launch a crushing high kick against the opponent's head or open torso. Understanding an opponent's positioning and having a natural ability to know how they're supporting their weight is vital to karate success, as it often relies on predicting opponent's physical movements or striking at the supporting leg to drop an opponent to the ground. Round. Once on the ground, the karate fighter can finish an opponent off with devastating kicks or punches. This is not to say that karate does not involve groundwork. Very quickly, karate practitioners realized that they needed to be proficient in ground and pound techniques as well as striking, and thus karate still includes some joint locks and submission techniques, though without the extreme focus of Brazilian jiu-jitsu on groundwork. So which is better? The answer is unfortunately one of pure circumstance, though for us personally, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu has slightly more appeal than traditional karate. BJJ's focus on closing the distance between yourself and an opponent and bringing the fight to the ground immediately negates many of the most devastating striking techniques that exist in any martial arts form and nullifies a large portion of the opponent's strength as they are no longer able to wind up full body power punches or kicks. It also limits the opportunities for you to inadvertently hurt yourself by throwing a poorly executed punch or kick which could lead to a broken hand or foot. Karate, however, provides a great number of opportunities to finish off a foe before they get close enough to cause serious damage, and it focuses on guards against strikes which will give you the tools you need to limit the punishment you take from a powerful striker. Sometimes, circumstances simply won't allow you to drop an opponent to the ground and overpower them through superior technique, like for instance if you're fighting in a very small space. Karate also encourages a fighter to remain mobile, which can be critical for fighting multiple opponents. BJJ, on the other hand, has an almost myopic focus on fighting a single opponent at a time and is one of the worst martial arts forms for defending yourself from multiple attackers. The advantage that Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu provides on the ground though simply can't be ignored, and there's a reason why small fighters can successfully defeat even heavyweights using the technique, something that karate doesn't so easily allow. In the end, which martial art is better comes down to circumstance and personal preference, though for us personally we prefer the ability to move a fight to the ground where we can better defend ourselves against strikes and quickly force an opponent into submission or simply incapacitate them by destroying their limbs. Alright there Bruce Lee, now that you made it through the video and before you start yelling at us in the comments, why not check out one of our other great videos like this one here, or if that one doesn't do it for you, why not check out this one instead? We promise both are great, so don't wait and click now.